here, here, I'm We're here. We're rich. We don't have any more financial problems. We're millionaires. We never had financial problems. Okay, we're millionaires. Okay, how about? I just got an email, mm -hmm. and the email says somebody mm -hmm. in Nigeria wants to give me $10 million. Okay, that's a very famous scam. They call it Nigerian Prince uh, Email Scam. Aha. Yeah. Do you guys know what a scam is? A scam is a scheme to get someone's money. Scheme, spelled S-C-H-E-M-E, is a plan but with bad motives. Take a look at this. Nigerian Prince email scams still rake in over $700,000 a year. Here's how to protect yourself. Do you guys know or ever get that email that says this person wants to send you millions of dollars? Well, today we're going to talk about scams. We're going to learn lots of idioms and expressions that have to do with scams, and we're going to do some shadowing. I'm going to read that article for you guys. I'm going to teach you guys lots of stuff. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe, comment, like, turn on notifications, and make sure you watch this video from start to end because it's going to teach you some really cool things. I hope you guys have never gotten scammed. So we're not millionaires? Guess not. So, before we get started, let's do a little shadowing. You guys follow along as I read this. And this is what I was talking about. Nigerian Prince email scams still rake in over $700,000 a year. Here's how to protect yourself. Here, rake in. Rake in means to make, to take. You know, teaching, I rake in a few thousand dollars a month. My videos on YouTube usually rake in about 500 to 1,000 views. Got it? Let's start. The Nigerian Prince email scam is perhaps one of the longest running internet frauds. Actress Anne Hathaway even joked about it in her monologue on Saturday Night Live over a decade ago. Now here, a decade means 10 years ago. Also called Nigerian letter scams or foreign money exchanges. These typically start with an email from someone overseas who claims to be royalty. Now here, royalty means a king, a prince, a queen. The fraudsters lure you in by offering a share of a huge investment opportunity or a fortune they can't get out of the country without your help. Then they ask you either for a bank account number so they can transfer the money to you for safekeeping or for a small advance payment to help cover the expenses of the transferring the money. Yes, exactly. That's when they either take your payment and disappear or worse, drain your bank account. Okay, now here, drain your bank account. Let's highlight it. Drain your bank account in blue. Okay, drain, you ever see a sink and water goes down the drain? Well, here, drain your bank account means to empty it. Like, I just came from the gym and I'm completely drained. It means I'm tired. Listen to this. Americans lost $703,000 last year to these types of fraud, according to a new business report by ADT Security Services, using data from the Better Business Bureau scam tracker. As long as these types of scams keep working, people will continue to use them. Anja Salam, ADT project manager, tells CNBC, make it. See that? Now, that's a name of a show, so don't get confused. Tells CNBC Make It. CNBC Make It is a television show, so it sounds kind of unusual here where it says ADT Project Manager tells CNBC Make It. CNBC Make It is a name. Why people fall for these scams and how to stay safe. Okay, let's read it again. Why? people fall for these scams and how to stay safe. To fall for something means to be tricked into doing something. 
It doesn't mean fall like you fall down. Here, fall for these scams. Here, see it? Why people fall for these scams? It means how are people tricked into doing this? The reason these scams are so effective is that they present victims with a perfect storm of temptations. Dr. Frank Andrew, a social psychologist and professor at Illinois-based Knox College, tells CNBC Make It. Okay, what do we mean here? Perfect storm for temptation. A perfect storm means something. Remember, a storm explodes. Something that's perfect and can explode. Temptation is something that lures you in. Like, I'm always tempted to eat chocolate. First, these scams play on people's greed. Unfortunately, we all have a little bit of greed to us, and that's what it says here. First, these scams play on people's greed. Free money! First, these scams play on people's greed. Many times, the scam is set up in a way where the victims are promised that they will make a hefty financial profit without much effort. McAndrew says, in most successful scams, the fraudsters play or prey on your desire to be a hero. Let's read that again. In most, and see if we understand, in most successful scams, the fraudster also prey on your desire to be a hero. Okay, here, pray is not like kneel down and pray to God. This is P-R-E-Y. Like a lion preys on its victim. This one, hefty, means a lot. We get the opportunity to feel good about ourselves by helping another person in need, McAndrew says. After all, what could be more noble than helping an orphan in need or helping some poor soul recover money that rightfully belongs to them in the first place. See, let's go back here. These Nigerian Prince email scams. Okay, what are they? You get an email, and the email tells you, oh, I need help. I have these billions of dollars, and I don't know how to get it out of my country. So now, the greed kicks in. When something kicks in, it means it starts. The greed kicks in. And then it goes back to what I was saying here. We get the opportunity to feel good about ourselves by helping another person in need. You say, oh my God, not only will I get money, but that person, I can also help them. Listen to this. This is really crazy. This is very important. As long as these types of scams keep working, people will continue to use them. Anja Salam, ADT project manager. Now, here's how you can stay away from these scams. The best way not to fall for these is to recognize them from what they are. Experts say these types of emails are typically unexpected and from an unknown sender. Some even email providers may even automatically send these to your spam folder. If this type of email does land in your inbox, though, don't send money or give out your personal information to strangers, no matter how sad the story or enticing the reward. Enticing the reward. Enticing is something very nice, something very beautiful that lures us in. You understand? It's very enticing when someone tells you they will give you free money. It means it's really nice. It lures you in. If you do fall for scams like this, McAndrews adds, don't feel too bad. Remember that lots of people have made the same mistake. The scammers are also good at luring us into a relationship before the sting comes. See that? This is really good here for you guys. The scammers are also good at luring us into a relationship before the sting occurs. You know, they make you feel like you're in a relationship. They're friends. And then like a bee, ping, they sting you. Which simultaneously builds up a sense of trust, which then causes us 
to almost feel a sense of obligation to provide help to them when the need arises, he says. These scams are expensive, but they're not the worst. Overall, Americans lost over $26 million to scams last year, according to ADT. While the Nigerian Prince-style schemes can cost a lot if you fall for them, investment fraud and romance scams are the most expensive for victims. Investment fraud of all types, including Ponzi and pyramid schemes, committed over the past three years cost victims an average of $8,648, according to ADT. Victims of romance schemes, sometimes referred to as sweetheart scams, lose an average of $6,003. Okay, don't go anywhere. We're going to learn so much about scams, fraud, Ponzi schemes. Did you see this here? Ponzi and pyramid schemes. I'm going to teach you some expressions and idioms that have to do with Ponzi and pyramid schemes. And I'm going to introduce you guys to the king of Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes. Don't go anywhere. Like, comment, and of course, subscribe. We've got so much to learn today. And it's pretty cool, right? Scams, scheming, frauds. Stick with me. Don't go anywhere. Register for my classes. I will have you speaking like a native English teacher in just five days for $500. Send me the money now. That's a scam. The Nigerian Prince scam. Pretty crazy, right? So let's talk about scam artists. You see, scam artist, my friend, is someone who's got a real talent for trickery and deception. Yes, they're like the ultimate smooth talkers. Always ready to pull a fast one on an unsuspecting suspect. To make a quick buck, these slick operators use all sorts of schemes and tricks to con people out of their hard-earned cash. Yes, whether it's selling bogus products, running phony investment schemes, we're gonna talk about that, or playing mind games to gain your trust, they're always one step ahead scheming and plotting to take advantage of anyone who crosses their path. So if you ever come across someone who seems to be too good to be true or offers you a deal that sounds too sweet, you better watch because you might just be dealing with a scam artist. And trust me, you don't want to get caught up in their web of lies and deceit. Scam artists are the worst people on earth. Uh, you saw the Nigerian print scam. You feel bad for the person, your heart breaks. So then you want to help them. And that's where the problem comes in. You end up giving them your money. So now, I'm going to tell you guys a story filled with idioms and expressions about scam artists. And let's see what you guys learn. And after that, I will teach you the idioms, the slang, and the expressions. All right, listen up. I got a story for y'all right out of Metropolis, the city that never sleeps, you know? So there's this dude, Maxwell. But everyone's calling him Max. Now, Max ain't your run-of-the-mill guy. No. He's what we call a real smooth talker, a con artist, if you catch my drift. They even nicknamed him Snake Oil Max because he's always peddling some shady stuff, people. Yes. One sunny day, Max sets up shop at the local market, flashing that megabot smile and pushing his latest gimmick, a miracle cool cure. He says, yes, a miracle cure, he says, supposed to fix everything from a scratch to a broken heart. And let me tell you, folks, we're lapping it up like there's no tomorrow. People were just going crazy. Now, Max ain't picky about his marks. He spots this young couple strolling by, looking all doe-eyed and innocent-like. So what's he do? He strolls right on up. 
and lays on the charm thick as molasses and starts spinning tales about riches and fame. Next thing you know, they're hanging on every word, ready to fork over their life savings. So Max leads him to a quiet corner, whips out his bag of tricks, and starts playing the shell game. You know, where you gotta guess which cup the pea's under. Classic con stuff. And sure enough, those poor suckers take the bait. Hook, line, boom, sinker. Meanwhile, the cops ain't sitting on their thumbs. They've been keeping tabs on old Max. Knowing he's up to no good, so they send in their undercover squad, waiting for the right moment to pounce. But wouldn't you know it, as the sun sets and the market winds down, Max's luck finally runs dry. The cops swoop in, slap the cuffs on him, that's all she wrote. Max's days of fleecing the flock are over. But let me tell you, his downfall, it's a lesson for us all. you got to watch out for them wolves in sheep's clothing. Them snake oil salesmen looking to make a quick buck, because as long as they're folks like Max out there, the hustle never sleeps. Okay, so I told you guys this story. Now I'm going to break down those expressions for you. Because you got to know them. you got to be one step ahead. Let's start with the idiomatic expressions first, then we'll get to the slang. Snake oil salesman, someone who sells phony or worthless products with deceptive claims. Like I said, I'll teach English in five days for $500. That would make me a snake oil salesman, but I would never say that, because that would be a lie. A wolf in sheep's clothing, a person who appears harmless, friendly, but is actually Deceitful and evil. Fleecing the flock. Cheating or tricking people, especially for financial gains. Taking someone for a ride. Not like putting them in your car and taking them. Taking someone for a ride means deceiving or manipulating someone often for personal gains. You take someone for a ride to get their money for yourself. Pulling the wool over someone's eyes means deceiving or trickery or tricking someone. This one you guys should know. A con artist, a person who deceives others for financial gain, often by gaining their trust, like the Nigerian print scams. All those were con artists. Swindler, almost the same, but a little different. Someone who cheats or defrauds others, especially by deceitful methods. Grifting. Engaging in dishonest schemes or tricks to obtain money or property. The shell game, you gotta know. Well, if you lived in New York like me, you would know. A gambling scam where a small object is hidden under three shells and the participant must guess where the, the small object is after they move the shell. Now this one is really important and pay attention. Ponzi scheme, a fraudulent investment scheme where returns for earlier investors are paid with money from later investors rather than profits. Now, since we're talking about Ponzi schemes, we have to take a look at the king of Ponzi schemes. Do you guys have any idea who Bernie Madoff is? Bernie Madoff was one of the worst human beings on earth. He destroyed people's lives, but at the end, he got what he deserved. The FBI came swooping in, they arrested him, and he ended up dying in prison. Yes, he got what he deserved. Now, take a look at this. This is Bernie Madoff and what happened. Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme. Did you know that one man was able to con tens of billions of dollars from investors? Over the course of multiple decades, Bernie Madoff operated the largest Ponzi scheme in history. 
A Ponzi scheme is a type of scam that promises significant returns on investments. But in reality, the payouts come from money new contributors have invested. The term is named for Carlo Ponzi, a 20th century Italian immigrant to the United States who made millions of dollars fraudulently promising to double investments to those buying into his plan to sell stamps. Though his scheme lasted only a couple of months, Madoff's Ponzi scheme lasted for decades. Madoff founded Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities and used his relationships and prestige to get wealthy business people to invest their money with him. He even served as a NASDAQ director for three terms. Investigators posited that the scheme originated in the early 1980s and continued into the 21st century. The global economic crisis in 2008 caused investors to try to withdraw billions of dollars. However, Madoff didn't have enough funds available and the scheme collapsed. Estimates of the investors' losses ranged from $50 billion to $65 billion. In 2009, Madoff pleaded guilty to 11 counts of fraud, money laundering, and other crimes. Although he was 71 years old, he was sentenced to 150 years in prison, a symbolic ruling that kept him behind bars until his death on April 14, 2021. Bernie Madoff, that was crazy, right? Wow. Okay, let's get back to our idiomatic expression. Putting lipstick on a pig. Yes, putting lipstick on a pig. Attempting to make something unattractive appear more appealing. Catfishing. Creating a fake online persona to deceive or trick people. Like, I could say I'm a native speaker. I'll have you speaking like a native speaker in five days for $500. That's catfishing. Bait and switch. Advertising a product or a service at a low price, so then you get the people to contact you, then you tell them, hey, something totally different. Yeah, we had that for $100, but we don't have it anymore. This is for $500, but it's better. Buy it. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. That means you steal money from someone to pay someone else. Yes. <laughs> Could you imagine? I go rob him because I owe him money. Sweet talking. Sweet talking is really cool. Using charming or flattering language to persuade or deceive someone. You look really nice. You know, you are the coolest person on earth. I love you. Thank you for always being there for me. You're a great friend. Can I borrow a thousand dollars? Playing fast and loose. Engaging in reckless or deceitful behavior, often without regard for consequences. This one's really cool. Everybody knows who Robin Hood is, right? Robin Hood in reverse. Stealing from the poor or the vulnerable to benefit yourself, to get rich yourself. Gold brick. Yes, gold brick. Pretending to work hard while being lazy or deceitful. This one is really cool. Jam tomorrow. What is jam tomorrow? Jam means like bam, 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 jamming, rocking and rolling, doing great. Promising future rewards or benefits that never happen. Hey, in one month, I'll have you speaking perfect English. In a month, though, not these 29 days, so pay me now. Okay, so we got the idiomatic expressions, but there was some slang in there, too. So let's check out the sl uh, slang expressions. Scamming. To scam someone, engaging in fraudulent activities. Cheat, deceive people. Rip off. Doesn't mean <sighs> rip off. Rip off means get someone to pay you a lot of money for something that's of poor quality. You lie to someone about something and you rip them off for the price. Hustling. Working hard or engaging in aggressive tactics to make money. Often used by scam artists. I got hustle. I paid $1,000 for these glasses, but these glasses were only worth 50 bucks. Shady dealings. Shady dealings means like dishonest, suspicious activity. Especially activities involved in illegal or unethical behavior. I love this one. Bamboozle. Bamboozle. To bamboozle someone means to deceive them or trick them. Often by like crazy elaborate means. Yes. Flim flam. Deceive. Or fraudulent behavior, 
often involving trickery or deceit. Hoodwink. Not this hood, but hoodwink. To deceive or trick someone. Especially by lying to them. This one's pretty cool. Jip. G-Y-P. To cheat or swindle someone. Like, I got jipped. The guy told me these were real Calvin Klein glasses, but when I got home and checked, I found out they were knockoffs. Now, a knockoff is something that's fake. Like, you see a guy wearing a real expensive watch, but his watch isn't real. Is that a real Rolex? No, man, that's a knockoff. A knockoff is a fake brand of something. But my CK glasses, Calvin Klein, are real. They're genuine. Chisel means to cheat or defraud someone often by exploiting a situation for personal gains. Um, I see a problem that learners have. Um, I, I don't want to get sidetracked from what we're talking about, but I see a lot of learners say, like, these are original CK glasses. Don't use original for something that's real. You see, the word original means the first one. Or... You can use original for paintings. Like you'd say, is that an original Picasso? Oh my God. Yes, that is an original Picasso. Or you can use it from the country where you're from. Though I am a member, though I am American, I am originally from Iran. But if you say original for something, it means the first one. Like Google original iPhone and it will show you the iPhone 3. Guys, I hope you're learning things. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications. Here is where you're going to learn English, but learning English takes a long time. And I promise you, I won't bamboozle you guys.